So this is the uh, Shloka portion. Before that, we just start. I will just give you a quick understanding. Where are we? Okay, it is very important that whenever we come to sit in the class, okay, which sloka are we referring to? And then why are we studying this sloka? Okay, so it is very important that we. The no, I think Dave is just. Okay. So I'll just give you a quick understanding where are we? We are in the eighth chapter continuously, uh, even though we might have certain breaks in between due to various reasons. But we are in the eighth chapter, it's called Akshara Brahma Yoga. Okay? And Prabhupada titles this as attaining the Supreme. So I'm going to ask you a question. What is Member Supreme? What is Member Supreme? Supreme personality of God. Then word supreme. Don't go to uh, Today, all of you are with okay, I'm going to ask questions. Top most. Okay. Then the best. Highest. So, how do we understand this? Is when you go through from 6th chapter to 7th chapter to 8th chapter, there's a gradual progression of Dhyana Yoga being defined by Krishna. And 7th uh, chapter is all about understanding the absolute truth. So, he's not talking about the Supreme Person of God directly. He's talking about only the Supreme Person. So the supreme portion, according to devotees, is supreme personal devotee. According to the jnanis, what is meant by supreme? Brahma Jyoti. According to the yogis, it is Brahma Jyoti. So depending upon the individual's understanding, individual's capability, individual's knowledge, so that is why very intelligently, very beautifully, Prabhupada mentions attaining the supreme person. So you see from a devotee perspective, yes, attaining the supreme personal devotee. But for the rishis, for Jnanis, for Munis, or the Ashtanga Yogis, attaining the, 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 the Nirvana state, or attaining the Brahma Jyoti, or attaining the Putin knowledge, something like that. Okay. So that is why you're using the word attaining the Supreme. Okay. So that is the understanding. So the chapter is divided into uh, these five categories. The first, first category is all, all talking about seven to eight questions. Somebody will, some will say six questions, some will say seven questions. But ideally, Arjuna posts these questions. Okay, What is Adhyatma, Ali? Daiva, Adi Budi, Adi Bhuta, and what is meant by productive activities, Adi Yajna. So these are some of the questions specifically mentioned or asked by Arjuna, and then Krishna answers these questions. So that is one portion of it. Because the seventh chapter is all about the absolute truth. It's all about how do I relate to, how do I understand this material manifestation, how do I understand this Brahman, how do I understand this with my material conception of eyes. Oh, I see sun, oh, I see moon. So all these, what are they? Munkisha saying these are all nothing but me. If you are not able to understand me as Supreme Person of God, at least understand me as this energy manifestation. So it is all about 7th chapter. 8th chapter is sandwiched between 7th and 9th chapter. 9th chapter is all about pure devotion service. And 7th is all about understanding the Brahman language. That's all. But 8th is summit between this. So from this take to the next stage. Okay. So in that, the main, the main question is about how do we remember Krishna at the moment of death? So the very important two slokas we have gone in, in detail. And the next question is all about Yoga Mishra. As yogis, what will happen? So Yoga Mishra means some kind of a mixture. So we have a lot of Mishra Bhaktis defined. Come 5th chapter, 6th chapter and 7th chapter also. And 8th chapter also focuses some specific slokas on Yoga Mishra. And two slokas on pure devotion. Okay. What are the two slokas? Specifically, we are talking about whenever. Whenever or whatever be the situation, when you remember me continuously, you will come back to me. There is no assumption. There is no doubt about it. So that is that is two slokas directly mentioning about pure devotion service. But at this stage, at this stage, it is not, it, is, it may not be in a situation where we will be able to take it fully. Okay? Only after ninth chapter, we will be able to understand why he mentioned this in the eighth chapter. For example, in second chapter itself, the entire Bhagavad Gita is summarized. Okay, he finally he's talking about everything. Okay, leave out everything, just seven until that is already told in the second chapter. But still, he goes to third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then finally again comes in line, and then again he told. Similarly, same this eighth chapter is kind of a combination between how do I see, how do I understand, how do I realize the Supri as a as a bhakta or as a normal uh, Kanishta level person or as a as a jnani or a rishi. Okay. And the last section is about material world and spiritual. This is how this particular chapter is uh, is divided. 
So Adi Atma, Adi Buddha, Adi Deva, and Adi Yajna. So these things we all know. Okay? Adi Atma talks about the, the person, the individual person, or the Brahman. So Prabhupada uh, in the Purport mentions Adi Atma is generally the living, considered that as an individual living entity. But here it is mentioned as Brahman. Okay? So nothing but the, the energy manifestation as the living entity. Okay? And that particular living entity performing certain karma. So that karma is defined as the fruitive activities. So any activity will have a will have the result, and then that is all over towards sense cultivation and material entanglement. Okay, Adi Buddha, we know Adi Deva and Adi Yajna. See, these are some of the detailing is given. I will get into what is specifically this chapter, this particular two slokas. Okay. What is he talking about? Twenty-five. He is talking about at the moment of death, during the night, during the fortnight of the waning, which means it's going away, and then when the sun passes to the south. Okay. It's like from the uh, Uttarayana to Dashanan. Dashanan is the soul portion. What will happen? He goes, somebody who is, somebody here means the yogis or somebody who is trying to focus on the Brahman part. If they are able to, not able to fully focus and they are able to leave their body at that moment of them, they get a chance to go to moon planet. Okay? So they go to the moon planet and they live for some time, drink somarasa and then for that whatever benefit uh, of the credit balance that they got, they will enjoy there and then Unfortunately, they will come back. Okay. This is the this is the entire crux. Okay. So how do I see this 20th sloka? Before this 20th sloka, we need to understand what is 25 and then 20, 24, 25, and 26. Okay. So this is this this is the Bhagavatam sloka. I'll come to this Bhagavatam sloka very very nicely. The same Bhagavatam sloka. You see through the lines of the Bhagavatam sloka also. Tatshantaya Kantama. Matihi Pitra Deva Vrata Puman Gantva Chandramasam Yogam Soma Paha Punash. So, which means the same lines. So if you see the uh, sloka Sankri, it's the same thing. Such materialist persons attracted by sense gratification and devoted to the forefathers and demigods can be elevated to the moon, where they drink and extract a form of land, they again return to the sky. So, Kapli Dev mentions the same kind of a content in this particular. This is, this is in uh, third canto, 32nd chapter, third sloka. So this is what Prabhupada refers in the Bhagavad Gita. So I'll come to this. We'll come to this a little later. But... So this is the understanding we should get between 23 and 24, 25. So what is talking about 24 during the influence of the fire god, which means that nothing but during the good good period or the light period at the auspicious moment during the during the fortnight of the waxing moon, during the six months when the sun travels in the Uttarayana stage. So this is one side is Uttarayana, the other one is the Dakshina, the next six months. So first six months is all about light, influence of the fire god, good auspicious things, fortnight of waxing moon, all those things. So if the, the yogi at that moment of death, he thinks about Krishna and whatever be the situation, he, ha he has got a good opportunity not to come back. But, but unfortunately on the other side, during the, the waning moon stage and during when, when it is kind of a dark period and when the sun passes towards the uh, Dakshinayana, he will get some kind of a benefit, but unfortunately, he will come. So this is this is what the the rules or the definition of it. We might ask why here, why it is like this. Krishna gives an opportunity also. Okay, somebody asks, oh, then it is it is very bad like this. Unfortunately, but that is how Krishna does. Okay, we, we cannot go and say why it is happening. Okay. So in one in one sense, how do we understand this? Krishna gives opportunities in many ways in Bhagavad Gita. Okay. What are the different kind of opportunities? Many ways. Even in each chapter also. What are the different ways in which Krishna is saying, okay, I am giving you this opportunity, you don't have to come back to me. I am giving you this opportunity, you don't have to come back. You don't have to give you this opportunity, you don't have to come back. In the same eight chapter, we had this, two slokas. Yeah, that's all. You don't have to do anything. At the moment of death, you will remember it. That's all. I'm giving you opportunity. So like that, many opportunities gives. Apichetsu, Durachoro. Okay. Even if it's a papi, even if it's done so many worse things. But I will ensure that he comes back. So like that, Krishna gives various opportunities. So this is kind of one kind of an opportunity. To whom? To the yogis and the various rishis. If you consider, oh, I still have an opportunity. No. 
This is for the karmis, jnanis, and the so-called yogis. The karmis, this is because the karmis, what is their main goal? Karmis' main goal is only to get into sense gratification. But still, they have an opportunity. Because they undergo certain austerity, knowingly, unknowingly, they perform some charity, knowingly, unknowingly, they do some tapasya, knowingly, unknowingly, still Krishna, give that, Krishna gives that credit. And in that credit, if the Sukriti portion is added, then the devotion service will be. If they still have that material desire, that is also getting good. Whatever be it, Karmis will get that. Credit. So in that, Krishna categorizes that particular uh, devote, for, for that particular karmis activities and see, okay, he can be promoted, he can be elevated, whatever it is, it is Krishna's mercy. Okay, so that is how we understand. So the Prabhupada mentions this, if one leaves the body at the time of designated abode, either accidentally or by arrangement, it is possible for one to assign to attain the impersonal job. Accidentally or by arrangement. Both are directly related or not related? How related? Accident and arrangement. The Prabhupada's word. Why did he come and accidental is that person is not that devoted, but uh, still he knows. Okay. So both are both are okay. uh, tangentially opposite, but still Krishna gives it up, that opportunity. So Krishna gives opportunity at many places. So it is possible for him because his main focus is to somehow or other merge with the, the impersonal Brahmachari. Okay, so that is what is mentioned. So this is what we have seen, Uttarayana Mandashi. Okay, one passing to in the light and then darkness. So this section ends and then we have only three more sokas to complete this, uh, this chapter. Okay, So the chapter ends with what there is um, this these two things. Okay, For the pure devotee, in Krishna consciousness, there is no fear of returning where whether he leaves the body at an auspicious or yet to be by accident or age. The previous one, the same thing, but is putting in the others. For, for devotees or for somebody who is trying to aspire, somebody who is trying to learn, somebody who is trying to understand, whatever be it, if he is under the shelter, under the ashraya of Krishna, he is giving you that, that assurance, that, that guarantee, that approval. Okay, this is again from the 24th book. And 27th also he is saying, Okay. They are not, they are never bewildered. Now we are, we are when you go through this slokas, we will get some kind of a bewilderment. Where, where am I? Am I in the yang or am I I'm in between this and that? I'm between this and that. Don't worry about that. Okay. So he's just just focus on your uh, devotional service, just be fixed on whatever devotional service you are doing. And definitely, Krishna is giving you that assurance. You don't have to worry about whether it is waxing moon or waning moon or this month, that month, nothing. So this is again giving an assurance. So he's giving mentioning it in 24 sloka and 27 sloka. Now I'll come to the Bhagavad Gita. Okay? Sometimes some specific shit. So this is what Prabhupada mentions in the perfect for the for the Bhagavad Gita. Okay? So uh, some very key points. Uh, he is mentioning this again. Um, Kapila Muni, when he is giving instruction to his mother, he is mentioning about various sections, and this chapter is all about don't get into entanglement of pretty activities. Okay. He started there, even though the chapter title is Entanglement in Pretty Activities, he is, he is giving a lot of uh, from the uh, initial sections. He is talking about how to uh, generally uh, the attorneys or the persons who are in sense gratification when they try to do certain following certain rules and regulations, certain procedures. They will get into entanglement. So, what is meant by entanglement? Generally, when, when, whenever you say entanglement, the word entanglement everywhere is getting used. Right? What is meant by entanglement? What is meant by entanglement? Trap. Trap. Okay. Then Trap. tightly knot. Okay. Then anything else? In control of anything. Like Not in control. Not in other way. So we are not in control. Yes, you are, all three are correct. So it is, it is getting trapped. Trapped means what? Knowingly or unknowingly, we even don't know whether we are trapped. That is the first case. Second case is we are trapped, we are not able to come. And uh, as Bhattacharya mentioned, this tightly known. Before this, no control. Okay. So activities that we per try to perform, like uh, activities that whatever we try to perform in, uh, for devotional service, will also certain times 
fall into fruitive activity. Fruitive way. How? When our thinking, when our willing, our actions don't align towards Krishna or not align towards pleasing Krishna, it is still a fruitive activity. So we might think, oh, what is it? I thought everything is Krishna consciousness, whatever I do. No. Sometimes what sometimes certain things, it is hard to swallow, but the fact is, sometimes whatever we try to do, yes, it is Krishna consciousness. We might assume, but it will fall under fruitive okay. So it's very important. We need to, uh, we need to, whenever the action that we are trying to perform has to have that particular smarana, have to have that remembrance in pleasing Krishna. That is called as the intention to please Krishna is through sector of devotion is very clearly mentioned. What is meant by your devotion service or devotion service? The intentions to perform acts that pleases Krishna is your intention is more important than the actual action. So these are some of the lines Prabhupada mentions in the sloka. The moon is considered one of the planets of the heavenly kingdom. One can be promoted to this planet. Made you doing different sacrifices recommended in Vedic religion, such various activities in worshiping the demigods and forefathers with rigidity and goals. But one cannot remain there for a very long time. Life on the moon is said to be last 10,000 years, according to the calculation of the universe. In spite of being promoted to the moon, however, one has to come back to this earth again when the merits of his works are concluded. So the last line is very important. This is mentioning again, this is from the ninth chapter, we're going to talk about. What is pure devotion? Sir? Okay. That from the book was for the last word. Shine punya parthalopanish. Shine punya means is everything gone. So whatever activity you might have uh, done for 30 years, 40 years, two paisa work story. You remember the two paisa work story, right? It is all waste. Whatever you have performed for 30 years, 40 years, everything is just shine punya parthalopanish. So again, it is like getting entangled. So in this CM chapter, the two main slokas that I wanted to bring it up for, for, for devotees. A couple of mentions about these two slokas. Very nice two slokas. It is addressing this to Mother Devi. Atatam Sharva Bhutana, Rukmat Padme Shukrita Alayam, Shutva Bhavam Sharanam, Raja Bhavena Bhamini. Nice word, Bhamini. She is addressing her his mother as Bhamini. But the word Bhamini, Prabhupada mentioned this very nicely, is Somebody, um, uh, Mother Devoti has realized that the person sitting here, he, though he is my son, he is the Supreme Person. Very nicely because uh, when when Mother Devoti posts certain nice questions, they're very important, she realizes that the person sitting there is not an ordinary person. Even though he is born out of me, he is my son, he is the person I have got it. So I have got an opportunity to, to get purified, to do some certain seva. So I will ask questions. So that is why uh, Kapila Muni addresses Mother Devi to his mom. The nice word, uh, Sanskrit word here is Krita Alayam Sharana. Krita Alayam. Krita Alayam means Alayam is our heart. Hrit okay? Padmeshu. Padmeshu means he is sitting in the lotus. He is sitting inside our heart. So he is he's, so what uh, Devati is being asked is Mother, please don't get into any kind of an activity. Don't do any kind of because the person is sitting inside your heart, Shutva Bhavam Sharanam Vraja. Okay. So, Raja means here Bhavena, that Bhavena Sharanam. You just take shelter at the lotus feet of who? The same person who is sitting inside your own heart. Don't get into any kind of an activity. Okay. This section is all talking about entanglement in Purti Vartya. If, if you read through the just the translations of this particular chapter, all talking about oh, this particular person doing this activity, he will get this, don't do this, it will, it will entangle him in this particular uh, uh, cycle of birth and death, and he will keep on going and everything. And in between the whole chapter, he is addressing his mother two times. Interestingly, he says, he is explaining, he goes on explaining these things will happen, but however, okay, therefore, please stop. One section. Okay, from first sloka to tenth sloka is explaining in detail. Then suddenly he stops and says, "Please don't." Then again he starts. He starts in another section, talking in detail about what will happen to primitive activities, what is the action, and then again in twenty second sloka he stops. Therefore, please. And again, same thing. Tasma atom sarva bhave na bhajeshwa pranishtam tam guna ashraya bhaktaya. Okay, tam guna ashraya bhaktaya bhajan niya padam bhaj. The same sloka, the same chapter, two slokas, more or less the same kind of words. Content is also the same. Message is also the same. So how do we understand this? How do we understand this? 
same chapter, even though it is all talking about entanglement and conflict activities, what is that we are trying to, we should do? He is addressing Mother Devoti, but what we should do, we should ensure that whatever Kapil Muni says, please take shelter with the lotus feet of Krishna. Please take. So he is saying, Mother, my dear Mother, I therefore advise you that you take the shelter of the Supreme Master of Godhead for his lotus feet are worth worshipping. Accept this with all devotion and love, for thus you can situate in transcendental love. Vajanya Padam this, this word is also nice for this. Tad Gunashraya Bhaktiya. Bajaswa Parameshti. Parameshti means the, the, the place or the position in which the Paramah, the supreme position. So just, just take the Ashraya, just take the shelter at that particular, then automatically. And this chapter continues again with so many other uh, descriptions and finally still he concludes. So why this particular sloka Prabhupada wants to bring it out specifically? Because he wants to ensure that um, uh, even though Krishna is addressing about the, the waning moon, the waxing moon, this Uttarayanam, Dakshinayanam, this is all for whom? All for somebody who, is, who wants to undergo certain austerities during certain period and then undergo certain karmic activity. They will do some punya, they will do some, uh, uh, what do you say, some yajnas. Whatever it is from a karma perspective, or some kind of rishis who will, who will go a lot of uh, very very tough tapasya, or some kind of jnanis who continuously read books, everything, they'll get into various situations. So for those people also, Krishna is giving you that, uh, giving giving them the opportunity. But what Prabhupada wants for us to understand, even though these things are all mentioned, as, as we usually say, right? The sloka translation is one message given by Krishna, and Prabhupada's purpose is the actual. Message for the for the devotees. So you have, for example, sixth chapter, you will see it is all talking about only Jnana Yoga. If you read through the translation, you will understand when you go, we don't read through the perfect, all you will understand is oh, Jnana Yoga is the best yoga. And similarly, seventh chapter also it will talk about like that. But if you go through the perfect, then you will realize no, no, no. So that is where we need to differentiate between why Prabhupada emphasizes devotion service right from the beginning to the last. Because we will never be able to accept immunity. Because we are not in, we are, we are so conditioned. That is why even in this particular chapter, three, four times the same message is being emphasized again and again. Again and again for what? Again and again on the devotion service. So this Karthik month, we are all so fortunate. Um, we, are, we are able to get through this uh, austerities. We are able to so certain uh, planned activities, certain unplanned activities. But most importantly, uh, even yesterday when we were, uh, when Prabhu, Prabhu was mentioning about Lila Prabhupada's various wonderful Lila, wonderful qualities, what we can try to um, see and assimilate is like how well I'm able to, I mean, how well I'm able to give back to Prabhupada. How well I'm able to give back to Prabhupada is what? His devotion service. And whenever we say uh, Prabhupada Ashraya, whenever we say we take shelter in the lotus feet of our Acharya, that means what is that I'm giving back to the Acharya? What is that I'm going to give it back? It is not that, okay, I will do this part, that, that part or this part. Most importantly, what is that, uh, the, the sadhana that I'm trying to follow will please him. What is the actions that I try to do will please him. So that is what is more about getting into the, the, the lotus feet of Krishna. When we are in that mood, we don't have to worry about what will happen to this karma, what will happen to this uh, actions, whether it is sinful, not sinful, everything will be. Okay. Very short sloka. I think I'll stop here. Any specific questions you can uh, can take. This is uh, Uttarayan 29th February from the English calendar perspective. When are we month? Generally, generally June, July it starts. It's, uh, January, February, and then again March, March, February to June. Generally, they say January to June. But uh, some, for, for example, in South, they, they follow certain calendar. In North, they will follow certain calendar. So it is between that period. January to June, basically, Yes. So this is what kind of guarantee? Okay, I, I, I can just be this. So what are the guarantees that Krishna gives in this particular chapter? Okay. So what are the guarantees that Krishna gives in this chapter? All through this, we have already seen through uh, different sections, but I'm again just giving mention, okay? At once attains my devotee nature of this, there is no asham shaya. Asham shaya. Asham shaya means no doubt. He's mentioning this. Within the same chapter, 
what five six times is mentioned don't worry like masu chaha is said okay sulabha partha sulabha sulabha means easy to obtain if if you are able to completely focus on my remembrance if you are able to fully focus on my activities if you are able to fully surrender unto me definitely you will come back to me there is no doubt about it and finally he says ananya bhav okay it means unalloyed devotion he is talking about unalloyed devotion also. so this these are like fifth shloka seventh shloka eighth shloka and then 14th and 22nd so all these particular sections he is specifically mentioning no doubt always So this two, this two uh, between again this this uh, last section also, chapter seven to chapter twelve are the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Whenever you get an opportunity, please ensure try to go deep into between seven to twelve. Okay. So between seventh to twelfth, these chapters are specially protected by. So if one is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita, especially these middle six chapters, in the association of devotees, then his life at once becomes glorified. The line here is in the association of devotees. When you try to understand Bhagavad Gita individually, very difficult. Okay, but if you try to understand Bhagavad Gita, when you try to understand this sloka perfect in association of devotees, then what? His life becomes glorified beyond all the penances, sacrifice, charity, penance, speculation, etc. Whatever he wants. For one can achieve all the results of these activities. Not simply by with proper mentions. Okay. The last. So it concludes that attaining the supreme. So this chapter, as we mentioned, is all about attaining the supreme. Last sloka is very important sloka. Uh, we'll talk about uh, swadhyaya, ekavu, yegya, dhyana, tapasya, everything. All those things at once will be achieved when you when you take a devotion. Hare Krishna. Any specific clarifications, questions, please. Being a very lean day, okay. So it's okay. Yesterday we had a wonderful uh, yes, but then what about that see now in the at the end take the name or now that I then that undermines the entire concept of karma with karma and then there are other ways like Kuti Shastra, Dhaku, the entire concept is based on the fact that there is a Kuti Karma, then there are Karma. Yes, yes, yes. So then, aren't there two contradictions? I'll ask this question in a different way. Why is this material going to create? Here. Sorry? Why is this? Why is this material going to create? He mentioned, Mataji mentioned very nicely, because we wanted to enjoy separately, because we wanted to come out of the association of Krishna, we were sheltered, we were having suffering, so because we wanted to enjoy. Why did we had that factor of enjoyment? We were envious. So the main reason, the reason for this material world creation is envy. Envy with the Supreme Lord. So I'll come to this point. So what is happening? Because of that, we undergo, we, we do some actions, we do some karma. So what kind of karma, it is good, bad or both not there. Karma, vikarma and akarma. So we see that karma, akarma. So Krishna is trying to give that opportunity in which if you follow through these, these procedures, we follow through karma yoga, yes, definitely you come to me. First, he is not saying no. He is not saying no, no, don't do karma. No, he is saying okay, you do karma, definitely you come to me. You want to follow Jyoti Asha? Yes, follow Jyoti Definitely, yes. There is no doubt. The result of Jyoti is definitely yes. The result of Karma Yoga? Definitely, yes. He is not saying no. Yes, you will take it. We want to follow Jnana Yoga? Is it possible? Yes, possible. Because there are so many yogis who have come. Definitely. Yes. If you want to follow Jnani's path, we want to understand through uh, studying all the Vedanta, all the procedures, yes, it is good. Yeah. This is for one group. This is for second group. This is for third group. And this is for fourth group. Like that, Krishna is so merciful. He is giving opportunity for everybody. So, which means, 
either following this procedure also will get somebody or at the moment of death also. If somebody is not able to do anything, at least at the moment of death, he is giving the last uh, milestone. Okay, at the moment of death, you will be okay. Definitely. Why? Because he wants all of us to come back. By who for who? That's what the, the, the language is. Power. Yeah. Then it, that's right. then it under, undermines all the other power there. Yes, it, it, then, even then, though. Then, then other yeah. even that is the, yeah. your, your answer, your, your uh, thought process is correct. But again, the main point is at that particular moment, if you are able to remember, that is the most important thing. But that will not happen that easily. Why do we chant? Why, why all these prescriptions are still there? It is like, you know, this, you know, this, uh, this, the, the Santa Banda joke, you know, the Santa Banda knows, the, the Santa goes to the uh, South India hotel, he starts, he's, he asks, oh, uh, I'm very hungry, what is that, you know, okay, give me idli, leave it. So he takes one idli, then he takes second idli, then he takes fourth idli, still his stomach is not full. Okay, ten idli is over, still his stomach is not full. Then finally he says, okay, then the Santa says, okay, try one dosa. Okay. Then he, he eat one dosa. Then immediately his stomach is full. Are you cheated me? You cheated me. You should have given me this dosa previously itself. Why did you give this ten at least to me? So like that, when we when we see in one perspective, we may not be able to see in total. And uh, it is why why these prescriptions are there? Because these prescriptions are there because certain prescriptions we may we might be able to follow certain prescriptions we may not be able to. Definitely, you are not Be Depending upon the individual's karma, depending upon the individual's desire, depending upon the individual's envy, some some per some person's envy will be very little, some person's desire will be very strong, some person's desire will be very normal. So like that, everybody individually, everybody are conditioned. Depending upon the condition, the treatment is there. Any other points? Shila Prabhupada ki chai, I remember you Vaishnava ki chai, Mama Devasthi chai. That's great, you know, I'm going to be chai.